Brought to you by C Prime, an Atlassian Platinum and Enterprise Solution Partner and an Atlassian Verified Vendor. Power Scripts for Jira. So up to this point, you've seen how to manually run a script using the SIL runner gadget, the Power Scripts runner gadget. And you've seen how to add scripts to a workflow so that the script is fired uh, as part of a condition, a validator, or a post function. Now we're going to talk about listeners. And a listener gives you the opportunity to run a script during a different type of system event other than uh, running a script as part of a workflow. So in order to talk about listeners, we need to talk about events. Now, this is the events page in the system section of JIRA, and these are standard JIRA system events. For example, issue updated. What this means is we can write a script and we can attach it to the essentially attach. We can associate it with the issue updated system event so that every time an issue is updated and this event is called the our script runs and that gives us the ability to do something whatever we want to do in the script so we can also while talking about events i should say we can we can also raise an event at uh, whatever time we see fit using SIL. So that way you could maybe send out a, a system generated notification uh, during uh, like a, a condition uh, a specific condition is met, you just raise an event that you know is going to generate an email to users just because of the notification scheme and you don't even have to do anything. You're just calling a, a standard event uh, based on the conditions. So that being said, um, at the end of workflows, uh, you also trigger an event um, during each step in the workflow. Um, you can trigger the event there as part of the workflow, not just say issue updated. Um, and then you can execute, you essentially execute your script that way, almost like a post function. Um, the difference is that these event, these event listeners, they would sit on top of all workflows. Um, they, they listen to everything. Um, so it's like a way to create a single script that could essentially rule over dozens and dozens of, of workflows and all you need to do is trigger a specific event. So in Jira you can actually create your own custom event. Uh, I've done that here as an example called called an email event and what this event will let me do is add a script to this email event and run it in the ways I just discussed. So if we jump over to our SIL listeners, I'm going to actually I'm going to hit this add listeners and I'm going to pick my email event from the list. You can see the list is quite long. And I'm just going to pick the script from my listeners you want to be careful with events I'm, I'm sorry with listeners and services because these scripts are not necessarily being run by the current user so when I run a script from my dashboard gadget I am the user that's running the script otherwise I couldn't run the script when I am transitioning 
the status of a workflow. I am the user running uh, running the script because I'm the one who triggered the, the workflow uh, change. But for these things that kind of sit outside of workflows, um, like a service which runs, which could run in the middle of the night, I find you need to set up like a service account, a service user to run those types of scripts. And you need to make sure that that user account has the permissions to view the projects that you want to view and, and edit the issues you, you want to edit. Uh, otherwise, you'll find that your listeners and your services don't perform the way you want them to perform. And it has nothing to do with the script you wrote, but the fact that the, the executing user doesn't have proper permissions or there's no concept of user. So you need to specify your user and you need to make sure that user has appropriate permissions. And I like to use a service account that way. Um, people aren't coming to me and wondering why my, why I changed something when really it was the script or the automation that changed something. So typically that's what I like to do. The synchronous tab is, um, lets you decide whether to run the script now or run the script, um, all cycle, so to speak. So you can choose to uncheck synchronous and then your listener would run in an asynchronous manner, which means, means a couple things. It means you would actually be running the script at, on a different thread and, uh, you would not be able to edit the issue at that point because you've essentially exited the issue and it would be running on its own process. So you would choose to uncheck synchronous uh, when you don't need to edit the issue and uh, the script you're running might uh, impact performance and you need it to run more in the background. But 99% of the time you're going to run synchronous. So really that's all, you, all, all this is. You pick an event. You can even pick mul multiple events, which I'm not going to do. Pick the script pick someone to run it as, and then there you go. However, right now, my event, my script will never fire because nothing is triggering it. So first, let's look at the event. The event just sends me an email using a template. So very simple. I'm passing this key here because event listeners are within the context of an issue because most of the time events are raised when you're editing an issue or transitioning an issue or something. Events, uh, listeners are in the context of an issue, which is, which is nice. So let's see how we could raise this event. So I'm on a test script that I have that it's, it's just uh, my runner gadget is pointed to these generic test scripts, which I use to try things out. So I'm going to use this raise event routine that I just grabbed from the documentation. And it's got three parameters, the event name, the issue, and the user. Well, because I said we're in the context of an issue, actually, no, we need to specify the event will be in the context of an issue, but here we need to raise the event for an issue. So I'm going to use a test issue TP 50, and then the event will automatically be in the context of TP 50. The event, if you recall, was called email event. And the user, I can just say again, current user. And I'll be running this on my dashboard gadget and the dashboard gadget will just know who I am based on my, my user session. So let's go to my PowerScripts dashboard. Test three. I'm going to hit run. And you're not going to see anything. Let me just add this. Uh, 
Otherwise, you're going to be like, okay, what, what just happened? Okay, so the event was raised. So theoretically, I should be receiving an email from myself because I just ran that, that listener. I just raised that event. I always get so anxious just staring at the inbox. So I jumped over to the mail queue so you can see an email was in fact sent, which is, uh, you know, instant gratification versus just staring at your inbox. And here's my email saying TP50 and my issue was created. And there you have it. All right, so let's just go back over some of the use cases for listeners. You can use a listener if you're looking for a script that does something similar to what a post function would do, but perhaps applies to many, many workflows um, or many different transitions within several workflows. You could, as part of this script, you could do something like put a condition to kind of narrow it down to specific projects. So you could say project is equal to TP uh, and type is equal to task. And this way, your listener sits over top of multiple workflows, but you could still, or it's a single workflow because I have task, um, but you can still limit the, the scope of the listener to specific things or users or projects or whatever. So it doesn't have to be global just because it's a listener. So that's one use case. Another use case would be you need to fire this script uh, more often than just the, the workflow transition. Let's say you need to fire a script every time an issue is updated. That's perfect for a listener because you have the issue update event. Or you need to fire a script when a comment's added or when work's logged. So here's an example from our tutorials, our uh, recipes page. And this is a listener that it, it basically synchronizes two values uh, between two custom fields. So every time custom field A is updated, it syncs its value with custom field B and vice versa. So you can come over to the uh, tutorials and recipes space and look at that, which is a good segue for another um, really, really neat use of listeners, and that would be to keep two separate JIRA instances in sync. So let's say you have a listener runs each time an issue is created, and that event then creates uh, a similar issue on the remote system. And then every time an issue is updated, you have an event that keeps those um, two instances in sync. So a lot of potential with uh, listeners. You just need to understand when you want your script to fire and determine if a listener you know, it is appropriate home for that script. So that's it.